Good morning, good afternoon, good evening, and welcome to BWTM Sports. We have with us a special guest, a winning guest. We have the trainer of the new middleweight champion of the Commonwealth, Liam Cameron's trainer, Chris Medley. Chris, how are we doing? All right, Ingram, how are you, pal? I'm good. I guess uh, you're probably in a better space than me at the moment. Oh, yeah. I'm, you know, it's, it's, been, it's been brilliant. I'm still saying Pons Forge. You know, I haven't been out since that event. You know, I've been looking at all walls and trying to reminisce what happened. <laughs> so, I mean, um, like I said, uh, I, I, you obviously listened to the Liam Cameron interview. Uh, and at one point you were actually, you let us know that you were listening, which was nice of you. Yeah. Um, yeah, saying I, were, I can't believe you were saying I was boring. What are you on about? <laughs> That's what I got. No. Well, 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 the first interview we did together wasn't the most uh, exciting interviews. I mean, you were introducing Liam Cameron and you would. You remember the first interview we did in the dressing room? You didn't seem the most happiest man in the world. And then we did that second interview, obviously lean up to fights. So you seem a bit more animated. And my gosh, after the fight, when I came up to interview you, you were smiling, you were grinning from ear to ear. You were so happy. And I was so happy for you because, you know, all the hard work you see go down the drain at times as a trainer. And then, you know, it all comes together on that one night and he becomes Commonwealth champion. What does that feel for you? It makes me feel proud um, to be part of it because the thing is, it's a team effort anyway. You know, we had Dennis Hobson and AJ Hobson, we wouldn't have got an opportunity. So you have to look at, at what they did. Uh, and then the thing is that the fight should have took place in July. I don't know if you remember that. I do. Um, uh, me, Liam. Steve Barnes and Hassan Ahmed, we flew out to Lanzarote. Uh, we did, and we trained at a place called La Santa. And the training facilities were brilliant, the conditions were brilliant. And we, we put a lot of hard work into Liam then. And like Steve were doing his conditioning weights, we, I were doing his pads and his early morning runs. But obviously, we didn't have sparring out there. So, it were essential to get back. And as we were flying back, Sam Sheedy pulled out. So it were a matter of like, Liam were on a proper downer. Because it all previously happened with Jermaine Smile. Three times he pulled out. So um, he, were, he were on a big downer. And then Dennis and AJ, they, you know, they, they assured us that there'd be a new, new date. Then October came and they were back on it. So we were halfway there before we even contemplated on October day. So did it give you more time to prepare? I know that sounds silly, but did it give you more time to prepare? And do you think Liam Cameron would have been the same fighter that fought in October? Had they fought in July? Uh, yeah, yeah, definitely. Uh, because they were, they were on the same diet. Uh, Lee, who I spoke to yesterday, we're going to have a meeting with him. He played a massive part in, in how Liam prepared and trained. Because, I mean, it's easy to say, right, diet food, uh, have porridge in the morning with a scoop of protein, have uh, you know, a bit of fruit in between, then have uh, chicken and rice at dinner. It's about the amount you have as well and you know different days which you might be doing loads of runs you know that the, the dietitian added more carbs into what he did and to be truthful it, it worked out brilliant and but uh, and he told the way Liam were training they were putting more effort into it uh, he's tra he trained exactly the same as he did for the fight against Luke Blackledge for the mm -hmm. fight he did in Australia. But it all boiled down to his effort, and he put more effort into it. And going to Australia, he learned a lot from that. I, I think we all did, you know. Because uh, 
we meant to take a team out there, Steve couldn't go because his visa didn't come until the day of the fight. Oh, no. uh, so I, I was out there with Liam on his own and Tanya, his, uh, his girlfriend. And, you know, they weren't the, the friendliest bunch. I mean, I, well, I mean, Brian Armatruda, the promoter, were absolutely brilliant. Yeah. Uh, Zach Dunn's dad were a bit disrespectful, telling <laughs> saying to his his son, kill the poly piece of shite. Yeah, know? I remember. But it ran, it ran experience, and you know when when there's a crowd of like two thousand people and there's only one person clapping, fearing, and cheering for you, it's a bit you know it's a bit daunting. And anyway, when it when it lost. I mean, it were it were a bad performance than what it were against Blackledge, but you know it's still a downer. And it, that twenty-four hour flight home sent like two weeks. <laughs> <laughs> so now you have the belt, you're Commonwealth champion. You move on. It's all come together. Tell us a bit more about what was going on, because Liam said when he was uh, facing Tashidi in the ring, he felt he was kind of disrespected. Um, there were some verbals that were flowing back and forth, or some verbals in his direction, he said. And obviously you were the trainer at the time, so you tell me what you heard. No, uh, do you know that? I mean, that's just part of, you know, it, it, I think he's going on about how Glenn were like, saying, mm. Liam, you're dying, you're dead away. And that, oh, it's all part of boxing. Of course. That's one of Glenn's ta tactics where he likes to try and get in boxers' head, and, of you course. know, it does work. You can't say it don't work because sometimes it does work and it, it did work in with Liam in the past. But Liam's so over that and you know, he just kept focus and he had, he only had one thing in mind and that was to win that belt and I mean I can honestly say I, I had a missed call off Glenn uh, that I think it went next day and I rang him by and Glenn rang to congratulate me and yep. he said uh, he couldn't have gone to a nicer kid, which I thought were really nice at, uh, at that camp. Yeah, that's great to hear that both camps are, you know, I've seen pictures of Sheedy going and see Cameron and that's really nice to know and, you know, Glenn's a nice guy anyway, so that's good to hear. Um, so now you're Commonwealth champion, the future. Um, yeah. as a trainer, does that give you more confidence moving forward? Because did you have doubts about you as a coach before this? I mean, because of Liam's losses? You know what? I can honestly say that I did, yeah. I did. I, and I'm thinking, you know, if he loses this, I'm surely I've got to have some to do it. Or, you know, he's going to have to move on and, you know, go on other try other things mm -hmm. uh, you know, it's obviously going to give you doubt you know like we we lost some yep. commonwealth titles away from home obviously yeah um and against really i, I mean zach dunn um he were he were 22 and all with 19 ko's and what a, what a big big ta task that is going out to australia mm -hmm. uh, we still fancied it. I still thought Liam could win, and and he's never he's never been a million miles away from winning it. We all we all know he's had the talent mm -hmm. uh, from from how he how we won the ABA title and British Amateur Championships. Mm -hmm. But no, it did put doubts in my head as well. Uh, and like with Liam saying, "I'm going to quit if I lose," and he was saying that. Not in a way that, because he, he, he was 100% sure he was going to win. And, but you, you do get them little thoughts in your head, because you do. Were you surprised that, were you surprised at the punching power of Liam Cameron? Because I know you mentioned he, he was a big puncher, in your opinion. But um, were you surprised at the effect it was having on Shams Shidi? Oh, surprised. I was surprised how Liam finished that because I've always wanted that to come out of him. And, you know, I've always known he's had power, you know, taking him on pads and things like that. Yeah. But 
when he fights, he's always been on like, uh, I'm going to say desperation mode. So, you know, because he's like concentrating more, getting out of the way. Yeah. And not getting hit. Yeah. He's not putting, he's not getting the full effect of his shots. But that night, he just thought, this is mine. Boom, boom, boom. And, and, and like, how tough was that? You know? credit to him so what do you ensure what do you do now as a trainer to ensure that liam cameron is not a one-hit wonder and that he can actually become better as a champion than he was as a challenger well when, when we when we both sit down we're going to go through we're going to watch it well, i've already watched it about 20 times anyway <laughs> but we're going to watch it we're going to look uh, you know, the round, obviously round six, which was the round which he just dropped off at pace a bit. Mm -hmm. You know, I got a second wind and, and that, then just little things like that. You know, I wanted to use his jab a lot more. Mm -hmm. I want him to, uh, I want him to, how he finished, I want him to do that early on. You know, in round one and even round one, round two, yeah. if if, it, if the opportunity is there to do that, and go through gears right. a lot more, where his power will, will and his defensive. He's not just got power; he's got a fabulous defense as well. And yeah. behind that defense, he's got a great chin. And if you look at how many people. Like Clinton, he, he won a world title. What a chin Clinton had. Yeah. Big R, everything. Uh, so they, they're all ingredients as of what to become a, a top champion. So yes. We've just got to make sure that he's, he's on it. He don't gain weight. He don't, I don't want him to go over like 12 stone 10. Right. Uh, he's 12.5 at the minute. So... He's got five pounds to play with. But we, I mean, I, I, I went for something to eat with Dennis the other day. We've had a look at a few options. We, um, he's going to be fighting third of February at Ponds Forge. Okay. Uh, defending his title, and Liam will fight anybody. I mean, if we look at middle, if you ask me a preference, who I'd like him to box. Uh, Brian Rose is, you know, he, he's been up at world level and he's just got beat by Jack Arnfield. So, I mean, I think that if we offered it Brian Rose, it's uh, it's an avenue back in and a door for him. Yeah. And it's a good scalp for Liam and a test of where he's at. Yeah. So, that's the ideal one. It's a good fight. It's a very good fight. It's a good fight for Liam. Um, with regards to Liam, I know before I spoke to Abel Sanchez, it was back in July where I spoke to him to try and get Liam sparring with Gennady Golovkin. He mentioned it again, and now he's Commonwealth champion. How realistic or how much would you like to see Liam sparring with Gennady Golovkin? Well, obviously, it'd be a great opportunity and a great experience. And to go out to that, that place, Summit Gym, um, what an experience! Okay. So, yeah, we we'd be booking us flights for that. I've already checked price anyway, so yep. it's not that bad. <laughs> so you would you would def you would seriously consider going and sparring with Golovkin um, to get that experience? Definitely. I mean, sparring is a big part part. Of, I mean, when Liam won the ABA title. He was sparring Frankie Gavin for weeks on end, uh, Anthony Crawler, uh, and that was a big part of him winning it. This one, sparred with Damon Jones, Jamie Cox. But the sparring he's had is has been quality, which has probably been harder than his fight. So it's so important to get that quality sparring. It, it's the diff. It's it's you know like. Some people are sparring partners. Yeah. You don't want to be a sparring partner. You want to be sparring and learning. Where we can sit and look at it and say, look, we need to do this and that and, you know, learn from it. Okay, okay. 
Um, so you talk about Brian Rose being a a, 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 a competent, a, the guy that you think would be best for um, Liam going forward. What sort of a champion do you think we're going to get of Liam Cameron? I think, like I said, it's come of his family's way. He's got a good dietitian. He's got uh, the sports psychologist, uh, John McCormick. Fantastic. He's done his little bit. He's got me. He's got Mike White at Fighting Fit, Steve Barnes. And it, he's got loads of options who can help. And once that team all kicks in together, I think we're going to have a very successful champion and, you know, knocking on doors for, for bigger things. Obviously, you, you were telling me the European champions rank one above him, uh, an Italian guy. So that's an option. Mm -hmm. I could fight, you know, become European champion. Uh, and then he's ranked now number 35 in world. So there's loads of Options. avenues. Okay. Um, I, want, I want to close this interview off really by talking about the former champion, Sam Sheedy, who recently retired. Your thoughts about him? Uh, as a person, he's, he's great, the kid is funny. Mm. I can listen to his things all day, what he says. He, you know, he's, a, he's funny. Yes. Uh, talented. I do think he's talented. I think the. I don't. I know that he said he's retired, he's lost that desire. Uh, but I think that if he, if he just got that nutrition on board and went down to light middle, I do think there's massive opportunities for him at light middleweight. And, it won't be long before he's up there uh, winning a Commonwealth title at light, mid uh, well, light middleweight, which I think that's his way. I don't know about you, Ingram, but he's a talented kid. He definitely he's is talented. He's got a fantastic chin. Yes, he has. Uh, and, and, and such a great fighting heart as well. What a, a, <laughs> that kid held his chin out and Liam was hitting him clean and he just stayed upright but yeah he went down that body but he still got up yeah yeah i he don't did. think he i don't think sam in his heart wants to finish it there i know that i mean he's got i've, I've seen his photos he's got a lovely girlfriend he's, yeah uh, you know he's he's got a couple of kids and he's you know he's a, Looks as though he's a great role model for them. But I wish him every success in anything he does, and uh, Glenn as well. Glenn's, Glenn's going to be there while you know another fifteen years. Uh, yeah, but he he's a pal, and it's good to work with him. Uh, and it's nice to have one eye on him. For <laughs> okay, you're going to say. So now you walk the streets with the Commonwealth champion or the Commonwealth coach. Um, any final words you have to say, Chris? Say that again. You're now the Com you're, you're now the trainer of the Commonwealth champion. Um, do you have any final words, Chris, to tell anybody who might want to listen? If anybody's listening, just buy a ticket for Liam Cameron's next fight, third of February at Ponds Forge. And a big thanks to Ingram, yourself, dear Ingram, for getting all publicity to Liam. And you know, and the event. Thanks a lot, and hopefully, next fight will be as exciting, and they make Sheffield proud, and gets a good following, like he deserves. Absolutely, does deserve a following, and we will do our best to give Liam our very best to ensure that yourself and Liam and and, and his team um, get as much coverage as possible. And uh, you've got a home at BWTM right. Sports for sure. Thank you. And if you ever want to come down at Jim Ingram, you know you're more than welcome. That is something I definitely will want to do very soon. The home of the new champion, definitely got to come down to the gym and maybe I'd like, maybe have a day of it, really. Uh, come down to the gym, spending a day with a champ, come to come to the yeah, gym. Great, That'd be great to do something like that. And uh, I'm sure we can do that more, uh, sooner rather than later. Definitely.
hundred percent. That's a record day out of that. I appreciate that, Chris. And again, if there's any news you want to give us, any any information you want to give us, of course, BWTM are here. Um, of course, and also tell us a little bit more before I finish. We've got a couple of minutes left. Talk to us about where your gym is. We're working between two gyms. We're working between Lower Manor Gym on Prince Wells Road uh, and Fighting Fit Gym at Dinnington, which trainer up there, Mike White, is a great kid. He, you know, he, he helped me uh, help Liam prepare for this fight. Uh, he also did a bit of sponsorship with him, giving him all his proteins and things like that. Uh, great people. Great family to work with, and like Liam, Liam settled in up there. So get your set up and have a have a look. The other thing is one final question: the middleweight champion of the world, Billy Joe Saunders. Um, now that he's training in Sheffield, is there any possibility that Sh Saunders and um, Liam Cameron would spar? Tried, you know, we, we tried to get Billy Joe uh, to, to spar with Liam. Um, I mean, he's a class, world class fighter, Billy Joe Saunders. Yep. I liked, I liked him when he were in GB squad. When he went up to Dennis's gym sparring with GBs. Yep. I think he sparred with Liam then, and I thought, God, this kid's good. You know, he's talented, and um, if he can get, I mean. I think he's come to the Ingle gym. He'll, he'll love it there. You know, he'll love the style. It'll suit his style. So we might see good things to come, but we're always there to spar with him. Yeah, sparring's great. It's good for both. Fantastic. There's a chance of fighting him. <laughs> you know, <laughs> but um, it all changes. Oh, definitely. Of course it does. We went and sparred with Sam. Yeah. You know, years ago. Of course. I can remember. I can remember taking Liam as an 18 year old to spar with Brian Rose well, when he first turned over. Yes. And uh, said, Liam, one day you could be fighting him. And at, at that age, he handled Brian Rose all right. Yeah. You know, a good spar. So that, that's the one we want. Brian Rose, or, so. Or. Or well, there's another, there's another, uh, another kid. Was fighting on the first uh, of December at Bethnal Green. It's live on Free Sports. Who's this? Uh, uh, it's Grant Dennis versus uh, our Southport kid. And his name's left my head. Um, but the winner of them, they both undefeated. You see, okay, it's for English title, right? It's going to come to me his name when I've gone. So we'll look him up. Yeah. All right, Paul. All right. Thank you so much once again. To everybody listening, buy a ticket. See Liam Cameron on third of February. Elliot Matthews. Yeah. Elliot Matthews, that's the one. Now, thank you to Mikey for that. Mikey, our regular listener. Could to give him a shout out for that? And Mikey also says he's delighted for the team. And Mikey wants to say, he wants to let you know, I also praised Cameron's defence. It was demoralising for Sheedy as his shots were being caught on the gloves so much. Liam's an improving fighter. And he also said that Cameron would smash Brian Rose. Um, yeah, uh, Brian Rose. Oh, cheers, Mikey. Thanks a lot, Paul. <laughs> right. Chris Smedley, once again, thank you so much for talking to BWTN Sports and keep smiling. I'm always smiling. Happy as Larry. <laughs> Take care, Chris. Well, All the best. Bye-bye. Uh,